Hi, welcome to my channel, 10 Years Younger. In May 2019, I had a bunch of clinical treatments and 20 months later, I want to revisit everything I had done to let you know what worked and what didn't. I also want to talk about some of the side effects which you may not be aware of. So what I'm going to do is play the video which you can watch in full if you want and I'm going to talk over it. So let's get going. So this was me having Botox. I have some, you know, some small lines around there, not drastic, but when you have Botox, under here if they go under here we've basically got our lymph system yeah so you don't have a circulation like with our blood system so lymph moves uh, with our muscles for example if you smile then you know it moves the lymph through the system so when you freeze all these muscles around your eyes then the lymph fluid just stays there it sits there and that causes puffiness so when I had this done um, a couple months after I started to get puffy eyes and I've never ever had that any time in my life and it took quite a while for me to make the connection. If I was going to have Botox again I wouldn't have it any lower than here. The other thing with Botox is that it freezes all this okay so when you smile the muscles under here overcompensate so what I had and I'll show you an image is this really unnatural looking line that cut through my face there every time I smiled and that looked fake it looked really fake I didn't like that so um, I'm not sure I'd have Botox again maybe when I'm older if I thought I really needed it but there are some little side effects I didn't like so this is me having tear trough filler it got rid of the hollowness under my eyes I really really like the effect of this however a few months after what I started to notice because I basically have this vein I don't know if you can see it you probably can't but there's a purple vein that goes like this right under my eye and the filler emphasized that vein and almost made it protrude and made it look shiny so again with the puffiness from the Botox it really wasn't a good look. The one year after I had this filler under my eyes I got um, stung by a poisonous caterpillar. Your body wants to fight the infection or whatever's attacking you know your body from the inside so if you've got filler then sometimes your body attacks that filler and it all swells up and goes crazy and that's what happened with me and again it's not something anyone ever told me about but I had a big puffy eye and the filler on this side I had to go and get dissolved so just another thing for you to be aware of so this is the temple filler we lose volume in our temples as we age so to replace the volume here gives you a whole face shape a much more youthful face so I really really love this this was great the only downside with this was that it was excruciatingly painful so when they start injecting the first half of the vial into your skin it's not too bad but when they get to the end it was excruciating I mean imagine having liquid pumped into your brain it was just not a nice sensation but it was worth doing it so this was the plasmage now this was amazing so I basically had some saggy skin under here I still have a little bit but it's not like before and they burn the skin the skin dries and falls off you get these scabs and then it kind of tightens and lifts this was amazing you know this was just one of the best things I've ever had done and this will avoid the need for having a surgical eye lift you know this is amazing there are uh, home use devices where you can do this yourself but because you're burning your skin and I have heard lots of horror stories about this I've never really reviewed this on my channel so I'd say if you wanted to have this go and get it done professionally in a salon. So this is the jaw filler so I had a filler I can't remember the exact name I think it was Volux but I might be wrong and it's a filler that contains calcium because they want it to feel hard they want it to give structure it's only used in your lower face and it's to kind of emphasize jaw lines and it's they want it to feel solid and hard and it lasts for 24 months it's the filler that lasts the longest it wasn't painful to have and definitely it does give you a stronger jaw line the thing with this is that when it breaks down it leaves lumps okay so after the first seven months when it started to kind of be absorbed by my body it left lumps so I don't know whether you can see here uh, I'll turn my head and hopefully you can see that I have a lump here which is a pretty huge spot here which looks like a massive boil on my skin which is actually a lump of hard filler and I can actually touch it and squeeze it it's here and if you have jaw filler as it dissolves you will be left with big 
lumps on your skin. So this is me having my lips done. So I was terrified of having big fake lips. So uh, I only had 0.25 mils put into my lips, which is a really, really tiny amount. So they used a cannula and that was amazingly painful. So if you have someone who says, oh yeah, we're gonna use a cannula for your lips because it will you know, create less damage and inflammation and swelling, you want to run a mile. Always go for the needle in my view because the cannula is so painful. They make one hole here, they stick the cannula in, they kind of adjust it as they're injecting the filler up and down. They come out, they go up again and they kind of adjust it and every time they move it, it kind of cuts across the tissue in your lips. It's excruciating. Um, so I had 0.25 and it wasn't enough. And since then I've spoken to doctors who have said, you know, if you give a patient less than a mil, then they're not gonna be satisfied. They're not gonna be able to see it. They're not gonna get any pump. So I went back since and I had 0.6 mils of Juvederm uh, Smile, which is um, lip filler, which I had just to kind of make it a little bit more plump in my lips. The other thing about lips is that when your lips are being injected, they get all swollen and puffy and you may think that's what they're gonna look like, but that's not the final result. So my lips were all swollen, but actually as they went down over the following week, they went back to normal pretty much. So when you're getting it done, don't be fooled into thinking that the inflammation is what they're gonna look like because they, the swelling will go down. I had too much done in one go. So I had all this done. And I remember a couple of weeks later, I took a selfie and I looked at it and I didn't even recognize myself. I didn't feel like myself. So I would advise you, even if you want to have loads done, go bit by bit. So have lips and then maybe a few weeks later, have something else and something else. It's better for your budget and also you can assess as you go along what looks good and what doesn't. Most people who commented on these before and after pictures said that I actually looked younger before the treatment. So it just goes to show you can spend loads of money but not necessarily look better or younger. It's important to get honest feedback from your friends and family. My brother, for example, thought that my face looked funny after I'd had Botox. It was obvious that it moved differently and I'd had something done. Also, looking at this before picture, I have less lines now in 2021 due to cutting out sugar and the various treatments which I've done on this channel. So injectables are not the only way to go. Another thing I would say is that before you set foot in the clinic, be very clear about what you want. Because when you get into the clinic, they may suggest stuff to you and you think, yeah, I want that and I want that and I want that and you end up spending loads of money. One of the things, for example, the jaw filler, I have a strong jaw anyway, so I don't think I needed it. And it never entered my head to have jaw filler. Remember, they are making money, yeah, it's a business. They want you to spend as much as possible. I grind my teeth at, at night and all these muscles here, they're hugely overdeveloped. So at night I have to wear a mouth guard to stop my teeth from wearing away. And what the dentist said is that when I chew, so when my jaw comes together, um, I can't remember the unit of measurement he said, it, was, it wasn't Newton's, I can't remember what it was, but an average person when they're chewing, they put around 30 grams or whatever the weight measurement was, um, through their jaw to chew the food. I actually use 430 grams of pressure. That's why I have such a strong, sharp jawline. Yeah, it's not because of filler and it's not because of um, radio frequency, although that helps. So what I would recommend definitely is one of these jaw exercising things that you put in your mouth and you kind of chew it to kind of work these muscles because making these muscles stronger will lift your jaw and emphasize your jaw. So I'll put a link below. Maybe you don't even need any of these treatments, you know, maybe you don't need filler or anything. So hopefully this uh, video has helped any of you who are thinking about having filler or Botox or anything like that. And all this stuff is uh, not permanent. It all wears off, you know, filler, it dissolves and all this stuff will eventually, gravity will eventually win. So thanks for watching. If you've got any comments, please put them below. Let me know if you've had any of these treatments and have a great day.